We are back. Lucy is now being able to see like when we're coming live and stuff, and she's getting a kick out of it. It's fun, right? We're like, I was gonna tell you, shh, 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 sh so many there's a ton of them so wait one second there we go uh hopefully jen has the dates because i didn't put the dates on oh. there but oops first up we had him. you got him we have alex ross and i know he was on the 22nd mm -hmm. yay happy birthday happy birthday alex um what do you say about alex ross i mean his photorealism is what made him popular and he's been referred to as the norman rockwell of the comic book world yeah, he's a yeah. he's an amazing artist. This book especially, right? This is like one of his most popular covers. He has a very special relationship with Batman, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah, his Justice League, like the when they're all together, that is just I think it's um everybody knows that that cover, you know, when they're yeah. all together. I, I love that one. Every time I see that one, it's just like, you know that's Alex Ross. Right, like so much of his stuff, like you have to like really, when I first started in comic books, I always thought, okay, Fantastic Four is where I kind of saw him the most. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh no, wait, Anthony's like, Laura, look more into the Batman. And then there's an Immortal Hulk, uh, number 25, mm -hmm. right? The one where he's like, it's like space. It's a oh, badass yeah. cover. It's such mm -hmm. a cool cover. Uh, okay. but, and just a little tribute to him he said and i quote if you are interested in being an artist it's all about figure drawing figure drawing figure drawing don't ever think that you that you have this one licked it's going to be the last thing you need to work harder on so that was his advice was figure drawing hmm. nice yeah he, he does a lot of posts where it shows when he was a kid where he like where he was and then what he is now and you're like that's nice. cool it's kind of endearing he said he's wanting to be an artist since he was a kid. So it was one of those people that it didn't come later in life. He knew from when he was a child that he wanted to be in this. All right, so happy birthday, Alex. Moving on, we have John Romita Sr. Yeah, that his birthday is on the 24th. What's today's day? I don't even know what's today's day. 26. Oh, 26, okay. Well, a couple of days ago. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. I picked this cover especially because the negative background, I think, is such a cool contrast to his Spider Man outfit, those primary colors in the Spider Man outfit. And I think it's really neat and intricate. And I'm like, okay, because I was trying to pick one that I thought fit. What do you think, Jen? I mean, John, John Romita Sr. is a legend. I mean, all these <laughs> people are legends, right? <laughs> but but uh, John Romita and uh, Grant Morrison, uh, Alex Ross, like more so. But when you think like Spider, like when I think Spider Man, I think I think John Romita Senior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he. Yeah. What else did he do? He co-created uh, Punisher and Wolverine, right? I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did, and I know that he was. Uh, he was included in the Will Eisner Comic Book Hall of Fame mm. in 2002. Oh, wow. So, like Jen said, he is definitely definitely a legend and he has the war to prove it but yeah so if you're just hopping on it I, I like this one I think the negative background is just brilliant when put up yeah. against the spidey suit that's pretty cool so happy birthday John <laughs> uh, who's next Lucy uh the next one is oh shit I don't I, I don't want to pronounce it yeah Jeff. how do you, how Jeff. Do you say Jeff? is it Jeff yeah Jeff John why is it well, English is so complicated. <laughs> right? No, it's Geoff. I'm pretty it's sure his name's Geoff John. I was going to say that, but I was like, eh, eh, yeah, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> John's. His birthday is on the 25th. So it was yesterday. Yeah. Well, happy birthday. 
And you can't think Jeff Johns without thinking Green Lantern, right? I mean, I think, let's see here, 90% of the Green Lantern known today was either created by John or ideas enhanced by John. Well, mm. the, the blackest, blackest night was like, and then the brightest day. Like, yeah, he did. That was just, that's I, right. yeah. That's, that's, yeah. I think I own both of those series, but I haven't read either of them. Have you, Jen? Yeah. I, um, I know people, I, I think a lot of people really like it, but uh, if you were, like I like Kyle Rayner, right? And then like becoming the white the White Lantern was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, right right after. Oh shoot, I, I'm mi mi mixing up my timelines. But I feel like after this happened, was Marvel Zombies right after this or before this? Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't want to say one way or another and be wrong. I just felt like it was interesting because they were around a ballpark similar time, and it was kind of amazing to see like the black lantern rings come on like deceased uh dc and it was like night, night of the living dead it was interesting and then how you needed two rings to, to defeat one it was yeah amy, amy i think it's amy uh it says uh flashpoint too he did flashpoint oh, yep there's a couple I, there was something else that i was thinking with jeff johns oh i was looking through books today and i'm like anthony i'm doing something on this guy but i forget <laughs> Anyways, I'll think of it later. It'll come back to me. Next up is Frank Miller. Uh, again, I debated on this cover, Jen. I'm not sure if you'd be mad at me because I was like, okay, do I go Batman, you know, or do I go Daredevil? Because mm. you think Frank Miller, it's like, which one do you go with? And, I'm, and I was like, you I'm know what? I'm going to Batman. You think he's more Batman I no, known for it? or? Uh, yeah. I mean, I like his, the, the Daredevil, but I, I feel like when I talk to people about him, it's the Batman. Because then he, he even did the uh, the darkest uh, the the Dark Knight uh, the two came out a couple years ago, right? Where they like went back. Yeah, and he did Sin City. He did Three Hundred, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sin City for sure. Uh, oh, 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 Frank said Frank is in the chat. Frank, uh, he said that Marvel Zombies was two thousand six, and let me see. Oh. Okay. Is this Google dropping knowledge? Yes, yes, <laughs> he is. He's, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, he's over here. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Very good. Well, happy birthday to Frank. And last but not least, again, guys, these are all January birthdays. So we're mm -hmm. like, we got to pay tribute. Grant Morrison, which I had to do some homework here. I'm like, Grant Morrison, Animal Man. Mm. Never read it. Don't know a whole lot about it. Do you guys? No. I, oh. I need to get out there and read more. Jesus Christ. Right? <laughs> Yeah, so that was uh, so apparently Google's birthday is in October, so we need to rem remember this for for later. Because I was trying to find his birthday, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Who, who's that? Who's that? Just Google. Like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Oh yeah, Frank. I'm not ringing any bells, Lucy. I think mm. Mm. Okay. it's a dead end. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to all of our January babies! And before we start our personal picks, we're gonna move on to. New oh, Morrison slash. had X Men. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, Morrison had X Men run. Okay, oh, that's good to know because I actually did not know that. My okay. DC game's like weak right now. Oh, wait, that's, well, that's X Men. Marvel. Though. That's Marvel. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. <laughs> we'll, we'll just edit that part out later. Shit, we're live. Girl, we can't edit girl. that out. No, girl, <laughs> we're comic book woman, and we're fucking just shut up right now. <laughs> Fine. Nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. All right. Moving on to the next slide. So we have a little bit of news we wanted to drop with you guys. I was so excited the other day when I heard that Game of Thrones is officially signed up to do a prequel called The Tales of Duncan Egg. Uh, I'm assuming most of you out there watching are Game of Thrones fans. I binged watched this series multiple times. Not once. Not twice. Close to three times. Uh, so... I know it's pretty bad, right? I need to, I need to read more. Duncan Egg follows the exploits of an oddball pairing of Knight Sir Duncan the Tall and a royal in disguise, Aegon Targaryen. Hmm. Nice. Okay. Are, no, I like him. Well, you haven't watched it, have you? Who? Lucy. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I did. Okay. I good. Did. I was like, yeah. No. You, know, you guys I don't seem excited it. enough about this. I. Uh, I don't. Mm, I don't know. Well, see, I liked it, you know. And I, I, we watched it. Sam, we 
bench the whole seven seasons, I think it was, uh, when Rumi was born. So that was like three years, almost four years ago. Yeah. Uh, so it was like it, we were waiting for the last season, actually, for the last season uh, to come out. So we didn't get into the whole Game of Thrones like pretty late in the game. Um, so I don't want to get excited right now. Maybe till I know it's coming out for sure, then I'll I'll, I'll be like, okay, okay, I'm excited. Supposedly, there's supposed to be a bunch of them, right, Jen? Yeah. You, well, same. Like I, I kind of jumped on uh, Game of Thrones late, but. It, it, I felt like it was kind of great because I got to binge six seasons and then go right into season seven. Um, <laughs> but like how I feel about things coming out now, I need like a trailer, right? Just because then mm -hmm. it'll be like, it's coming. It's gonna Here it is. Yeah. Like, like to hear that, cool, like they're working on something. It's it's going to happen. I have hope, but it's like, yeah. but just show me a trailer or give me some some casting news yeah. and then I'll be more excited. So we have, <laughs> we have trust That's issues. Yes, we all yeah, have definitely. There you go. Yes, that's why it's like not till I see something, then I'll get. Yeah. Do you think HBO is trying to kind of plant themselves with these good, this good run, kind of like what Disney Plus did with Star Wars and the MCU oh, series? Yeah. yeah. Kind of build a similar slate. Totally. I can see that. I think they're just an all conspiracy to get me to sign up for HBO, and I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I mean. You yes, might stand for the stand against the man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, oh, somebody said that, uh, the con in Godzilla got pushed back till May again, so it got pushed again. There's so many like Ghostbusters, you know. Like I've been waiting for that one. I was so excited to see actually see the freaking trailer, you know. And then <laughs> you come with their BS and it's pushed again. And it's like, what the heck, man? We're bring I mean, if it's already May, like why yeah. don't you freaking release it? Like. Well, it's because of the box office, like money, right? Like Pretty that's the only reason is that they're like, they used a couple like, like Mulan and uh, Wonder Woman as like test. And I think they're still like, we'll make more money if it's in the theaters. So like, that's just the hard part. Like, like you were, you're saying like, you want to get really excited for like Ghostbusters mm -hmm. and even Godzilla versus King Kong. Like I want to see that in IMAX so bad, but like, and then they tell us these dates and now I'm to the point where I'm like, Okay, they said March, but it's it's probably get put pushed back to like May, and then it's like okay, well, I can't. I'm just it's it's where you it keeps getting pushed back so much that you're like, okay, I'm excited. I'll see you when it's, when it's when it's finally out. Like, and then I'll yeah. be excited. Yeah, like Black Widow. It's like fuck. But send it to Disney Plus already. I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> yes, that's how I feel about. I, that's what it's just. I was telling Sam, like I don't feel like I care anymore about <laughs> Black Widow. I don't know if I even want to watch it anymore. Like yeah. we all yeah. will, but like, well, I, will I go to the? Yeah. I mean, I'll pay thirty bucks for a few of these movies, right? Like, like, but again, like some of the movies I still want to see on the big screen. Like again, like the Godzilla versus King Kong. That's an IMAX yeah. movie. Yeah. I will brave going out into a theater that has like selected seats that's the one movie i feel like mm -hmm. i will go out you release that thing i'll go to nymax theater and i'll see it like yeah. ghostbusters had that great trailer right and we're all like yeah ghostbusters this yeah. is what we want to say and yeah, then that, yeah that, I, yeah that's true i would like to see ghostbusters in the theater that's true because i didn't get to watch the the other one so uh this one is i could say that i watched this one in theaters uh davison said they they had uh they don't want another Wo wonder woman 84 fl flop well that one was gonna be a flop no <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that had to do with where you were watching it you could be watching it on the moon and you probably weren't gonna like it <laughs> yeah that's just the reality of that one it's also like what james bond um the king's man which is supposed to be a prequel for oh. the kingsman series uh dune which i was excited to see dune like they were like i felt like they were gonna make it um like it was gonna be amazing like have you guys ever seen the, the original one or no dune uh, yeah are they who's the actress they're remaking that with mm, i don't oh. think i, I might not be thinking about actors. i just know that like the director was really excited and i got excited when i saw like one of the trailers and i was like that's cool like or pre-trailer mm -hmm. Um, and then Suicide Squad, Matrix 4, like there's just so many movies, but we're kind of like in this weird limbo where yeah. they say March or May or April and you're like, okay, yeah. I'll wait until then and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Morbius? That's, isn't that uh, next year? It's to, to 2022 slated, right? January? Mm -hmm. So they pushed it way back. Like we're supposed to get 
the Venom Here Comes Carnage or something like that before we get Morbius. Did they release any any uh, 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 trailer or anything for this? No, they didn't, for right? Morbius? Th yeah. th that short one, that like teaser one. I don't even remember. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a quick it's a quick one, and then same thing with uh, the Carnage one. It's less than a teaser. It's just like I think just they show the title, and you're like, okay. Okay. Oh, well, I want to give a shout out real quick to my girl Sani Nation. She's from the Netherlands. She just hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, it has Jared Leto in it, right? Yeah, that's Morbius. Yeah. Yeah. Sold. So. Sold. <laughs> I don't even care. I'll go see that movie. That's awesome. Um, okay, okay, so is there anything else we wanted to add news-wise? Uh, um, movies, Ghostbuster. Oh, did you guys see Tomb Raider? The the, the reboot? The no. Which one? I liked it. Uh, I can't. It has that girl in it. I can't pronounce. Oh, like the one that came out a few years ago? Yeah. The, I the, saw that. She's like younger and yeah, like, yeah. So I really liked and enjoyed it. I know some people were like, meh, but like I liked it. And there's, they were working on a number two, but then it got year. delayed. It got delayed. Let me guess. Spoiler. It got delayed. It's never going to come out. Yeah, I liked that one. It was okay. Um, I like Angelina Jolie better. Well, Eternals That's is supposed to come out. I so, know. Like, no. uh, That's another oh, yeah. one. God, we're downers today, huh? Uh, Sorry. Uh, Joshua <laughs> Williams says that HBO is by far the best online streaming. Mm. I currently agree only because I didn't have access to it. And now that I have <laughs> access to it, I'm like, and then Lucy has an awesome thing coming up. Yeah. Okay, mm. with that, I, I agree. Just because of that, I do agree on, on that part. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Better okay. than Netflix? Uh, oh, yeah, I think a lot. See, Netflix, I feel like before they used to have a lot of good. Right now they have a lot of good, uh, um, uh, what are they called? Originals, I guess, from oh. Netflix. Yeah. Um, but then it's like, you, you, at the same time, the good thing about HBO, they also add the, the, the older ones, you know, more like the cartoons and stuff like that, you know, mo older movies. So that's kind of. Not cool doing thing. it. You're not going to sell me. But it's not happening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It, you know, we we're talking about Peacock and not get that because the office is there. And oh, oh, yeah. Well, the office is a good one too. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's the whole thing is it's becoming like the streaming wars. We've heard this from other so different like yeah. articles and news and that kind of thing like they're all trying to compete and i just felt like i had netflix for such a long time that i will watch it like i watch it a lot like in a week i'm, I'm almost mm -hmm. always on it but since mm -hmm. i just got access to hbo max or now or whatever you want to call it um uh, i i'm I have this, these shows that i haven't like big bang right i never yeah. finished big bang i didn't yeah. have access to it and then yeah. Now it's well. See, done. like uh, me, like uh, on F on Hulu, like I just finished the uh, Reba. I was watching it on Reba. I never watched it, <laughs> never seen it before. It, it's comedy. I love it. I liked it. And then on Netflix right now, I've been watching uh, again for the million time. I can. I don't know how many times I watched it. A uh, Community. Um, so it's like those older shows that I like. You know. So it's that's how they get me. <laughs> uh, there you go, guys. So, say in the chat what your favorite streaming service is, and we will be right back. A little quick little break here. We'll be right back. Quick shout out to our sponsors over at Bird City Comics. Head over to their website for an additional 15% off your entire order when you use code CBW15. Back to the show. I, I open YouTube over here. Uh oh. There we, I think we're back. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> All right, moving on. So now we're going to start our actual personal picks. Lucy, I know you're so excited to talk about this one. Oh, yes. oh my gosh. I'm so okay. excited. Okay. Warrior. It's one I started watching because of my lovely, wonderful husband, Sam. I, every show, you know, when it's things like that is because of my husband, Sammy, over here. Um, this one, it's uh, Warrior. Uh, Bruce Lee wrote this long time ago and uh he was trying to make this uh a movie back in the day but nobody uh warner brothers nobody wanted to buy it because it was chinese um so now uh his daughter found his notes about this and she uh again you know took it around and cinemax bought it 
and they did two seasons um and now the well, they canceled because i guess nobody really watched anything on cinemax <laughs> <laughs> so hbo bought it and now they're trying to get uh uh, if they get enough uh, views, I guess, um, they'll make a third season. But this one is in uh, she, back in the 1800s, I believe, right? It, late yeah. 1800s, late 1800s, yeah, late 1800s when they were like bringing the Chinese to build the the the, the, the um, railroads Road. and stuff like that. And uh, uh, Sam, he's the the main character. He uh, he he comes from China looking uh, for somebody and for somebody, uh, he, for somebody. Yeah. and <laughs> he, it turns out he's an amazing Kung Fu fighter. <laughs> so he, he's so good. And he, since uh, once he, he gets to San Francisco, that's where he gets to San Francisco um, right away. You know, they're the person who's getting them. They're kind of like selling them where to go. They're telling them where to go. And, um, but oh man, I, I I just love this movie. If you love, if you like uh, kung fu, anything like martial arts, I not only it has those amazing fighting scenes, but it's an amazing story too. Um, every character you just like, you hate them, but then later on you kind of like them because you see their side of the story too. Like it, it just that means it's like good storytelling. You yes. grow, you grow to yes. love the characters. That's Yes, it's a slow start. The you, you know the first uh, uh, episode, it's a little slow, but it, it just keeps building up and it gets better and better. And I'm seriously, I I really want HBO Max to to make a third season because it just leave it on a really great uh, ending for season two. So I highly, highly recommend this one. Even how they like go from English to subtitles then back to Chinese is really great like for an audience like like because at first I was like oh subtitles and because when you're in the mood for subtitles great but I I didn't know to expect it and then but then they switch it where it goes from Chinese and then you're like oh everyone here speaking Chinese so we're just gonna go with English and then they switch it back like it just it's so such a beautiful way of doing it yeah like when they're speaking like their language it's like really good english right but then when they go back to like when they're speaking english you can see like here their accent like they're there you know they're speaking english it's so good it's it, it, it's such a smart show <laughs> and the choreography for the fight scenes like that was yeah. also what, what impressed me yeah. like yeah. a lot yeah one of the the actors my husband he's been following them well quite a few right like he there's some actors that he's been following them for a few years and he was able to name almost like every actor in this freaking show <laughs> because if you've been watching like those uh asian movies uh, you know uh you you'll know and um i think uh let me see the one of one of the the if you guys watch the raid like one of the uh actors is in here um and he's gonna be also in mortal kombat cool. Cool. yeah yeah so one of the actors in here so it's such a great show i love this show it, thank you by the way it was your recommendation that like got me I, to i think i'm on episode i just finished episode two and yeah, i was just I've like been watching this show so much <laughs> so if you, enough people, me, you know we'll get, we'll get season three if lucy pushes mm -hmm. this hard enough and beautifully said jen that they were kind of pulling to multiple audiences by making uh strategic use of the language i think that's very mm -hmm. cool you don't really see that a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, so Warrior, and it's on? HBO Max. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Sorry, Laura. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> moving on to the next pick. Oh, this one's mine. Okay, so this just recently got like a preview that you could get the first couple of episodes. I don't think it was supposed to officially come out until February. Yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, so this is The Great North. I, the reason that I chose this one is because I'm such a huge fan of Bob's Burgers, who isn't. Uh, so when I saw this, I'm like, okay, this is going to be just as good. So here's here's my mixed review. And Lucy, I want to hear what you think next. But uh, I watched the first two episodes of it. And so far, I find it very charming. A little too similar, kind of like a like a knockoff of Bob's Burgers so far. I, I'm not seeing enough to differentiate the two shows aside from a different location. It's like, yeah, we changed the scenery. But I mean, even the little guy wears his little 
his beer bear ears, just like the bunny ears. And like it, the characters all kind of have the same type of humor, which I think that they could definitely build on that and kind of separate this show and make it its own entity. It already got renewed without even season one airing. It got Ooh. renewed for season two. Oh, wow. So yeah, Fox news is definitely, or Fox news, Fox, uh, <laughs> Fox news. <laughs> there went half of our views. I don't watch Fox news or do I? <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> Fox is definitely like betting on this one to do well. Um, if you look at the characters here, you have the main character who is Beef. It's the Tobin guy over there. He's very similar to uh, Bob. Uh, no, not oh, he, Ron, Swan Ron Swanson. Yeah, he, well, his character. Oh, he has that the voice. <laughs> yeah, he does have the voice. He totally does. No, but his uh, the guy that plays his voice, Nick Offerman. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's oh, very similar to his character. Like if you if you if you kind of compare the real life person, and I like when voices kind of match their person. And then Jenny Slate obviously plays Judy over in that little blue puffer jacket. And I like mm -hmm. Jenny Slate. I think she's funny. I like her too. Yeah. Uh Alanis Morissette appears in the sky as kind of like a mentor to Judy because the premise of the show is that you have this one dad that's trying to raise his family and his kids on his own because the mom left, which is an interesting take. Yeah, you never seen that. I don't think I I not that I can think of seeing it, it like that, no. Well, n not in the way that they portrayed it like the mom <laughs> being dead and then you find <laughs> out like she's not dead. <laughs> she just left. But he prefers to think of her as dead, right? Um but yeah, it, it's good so far. I'm curious to see what they do with it cuz as of right now, it just feels like Bob's Burgers. I I prefer Bob's Burgers. But, but see, I think again when you pick this, I and I watched it, and it was um, again. I'm gonna wait to see like the rest. But it I I at the beginning I was uh, try to compare to Bob's, you know, because they're the same creators. But then I have to see it like it's completely different, and it's a little bit more mature than compared to Bob's Bob's. I can feel like I can probably watch it with my family. This one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can really watch it with, I don't know if I want my son to watch it. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see how it, I don't know how to feel about this one yet. We'll keep our eye on it. We're, we're getting a, <clears throat> we're getting a Bob's burgers movie. Yeah. Yes. They still no shit. It. When? <laughs> well, no, because of what's going on delayed, but we're getting yeah. a Bob's Burgers movie. See, Gary just said Bob's Burger, Bob's Burger movie is still being planned for theaters, yeah. but they're probably waiting for the theaters but, to open. Yeah, because some fun. Great, oh, there's also <laughs> some comic books too, the great variants. Yeah, I have a couple. I think I have like yeah. the free one only. Yeah, there's a couple of Bob's yeah. Burgers, but like, yeah, yeah the great North. I, like, I, I remember being excited for this, but then as I was watching it, I'm like, wait a minute, is this a replacement for Bob's Burgers? And then I was oh, like, yeah. well, I prefer better not. Bob's Burgers. I, that's yeah. what, but if it's similar, like people who are working on it, they can't really. And I was like, oh, mm. Mm. but yeah, they better I'll not. Yeah. Third, third episode when they premiere it. Yeah, Lucy's but, probably right. We need to think of it not like it's Bob's Burgers. We have to give it a shot on its own, maybe. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, yeah. Anywho, so <laughs> I, guess, I guess the majority vote here is you should probably watch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, just watch it, it. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Give it a yeah. Give it a nice try, and then we'll see what happens. All right, moving on to the next one, Jen. I think you're up. Okay, so I know this came out in like 2018. It won a bunch of awards. I just kind of kept like, mm, I'll watch it later. And then finally, I uh, I binged it. And this is not my normal my normal pick. Uh, it is very like adult and mature and heavy so and it's not something you can watch in the background like i feel like a lot of these things we watch today you can like be cleaning or doing something else but this is not that like you need to be watching it because there's like quick visual scenes that you won't hear so if, you, if you're not watching you'll miss it um it's only like eight or nine episodes so like an hour each great cast great acting it's a slow burn also like it's not going to be like I, I was probably pulled in and had I had a ton of questions from the first episode, but I was really invested after the fourth episode. And mm -hmm. it's like a mystery psychological thriller. Again, it's very dark and it's very mature. This is not mm -hmm. for kids. <laughs> and you have to kind of like be in that headspace for something that's like just a 
mature subject matter. Like, and and it's a good conversation starter if you're watching it with somebody because, man, I just, I don't like it. What's the general, like, how does it start? Uh, So it's basically uh, Amy Adams is a reporter who is going back to her hometown because there was a murder. Um, And there's some things going off, like going like wrong, like right away that you're like, this is off. Like, what is this? And it just, again, it's such a slow unravel that I'm like, man, if I, I almost feel like WandaVision prepared me for the slow burn, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but it's not the same kind of feeling. Like when I finish this, like, like I feel heavy, like it's like, Oh, but then when you watch it, there's a, uh, the very last episode has a mid uh, end credit scene that you need to see. And you're going to be like, Like, it's that kind of, like, and then if you wait till the very, very end, the author of the book, uh, oh, man, is it Jillian? Jillian Flynn. Jillian Flynn. Uh, Her and, I think, the director talk about the end sequence to, like, reaffirm, and you're kind of, like, and then right away, like, I googled second season, and it's, like, no, but yet maybe, but no, probably not, because, like, the star-studded cast, it would probably be hard, and then even, like, book-wise, like, but it's, I don't think I'm telling it. Well, but the soundtrack is amazing. Like okay. definitely after this is over, I'm like, I want that soundtrack. Like, and then you find out that the person who did, was it Pretty Little Lies, their soundtrack? I haven't watched it. I but watch it Big Little Lies, do you mean? Oh, Big Little Lies, yeah. <laughs> so that, that person who did the sound for that, which now I'm like, well, dang it. I, I love the soundtrack for this so much. Probably have to freaking watch that thing now because she talks about like uh the opening uh soundtrack the guy like who's interviewing her was like oh it's eight different ones for each for each episode and she's like nope it's the same song told eight different like played eight different ways and then they're like what like that's what i'm telling like the soundtrack was really well thought out and they even got like led zeppelin in there which is an incredibly Mm. hard get like incredibly hard get just man the soundtrack alone Minus all the like heavy, like feels like makes me want to purchase mm-hmm. that. Just like listen to it in the background, just because it was such a great soundtrack. Oh, okay. That so is, yeah, it's it's heavy. Start. Said that, that it's um uh, um uh, the same uh, writer of uh, Gone Girl, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, crazy one. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was an interesting. What's funny, though, I love you, Jen. I love you so much. But when I saw that you picked this, I was like, hold on. This doesn't seem right. This isn't this isn't Jen's picks. There's no there's no animation. Like, what the hell? This can't be Jen's pick. Right. So I started doing some research on it. And I'm like, OK, if Jen's suggesting this, I have to it read the book. Yeah. Yep. So I ordered the book. It came from Amazon today. I'm going to start the book first. And then on your on your recommendation, I'm going to give this one a go. Um, the other thing that kind of got me going on this is the coloring. Like, look at the use of green. I wonder if that was strategic. Yeah, there's green in almost every scene that you see oh. in this thing. Like, what was really cool is like after I went to like IMDb trivia because sometimes like I like something and I'm like visually it was really like a please pleasing. So like this, so was the soundtrack that I, I like researched. Like, hey, did anyone do an interview with somebody? Oh, yep, they did. And then uh, with the trivia, they talked about how every scene has green, and I was like, yeah, like she talks. Like the that that what you're seeing right now is wallpaper that is actually painted silk yeah. from what because it's like old money type of stuff like mm-hmm. it's like in a southern town uh, it's like a small small town where it's like uh, you either work for the hog farm or you're rich off the hog farm like it's that kind of thing like but it's just oh man like no I'm sold I'm watching this because of you I'm watching this but uh, yeah when I think you think green you think okay evil greed money. Uh, maybe even maybe a rot. It's to gonna say. Be feeling heavy. Like that's why. Like I like I rewatched it just to like re get it back, and then I'm like, oh no, I feel heavy again. Uh, <laughs> no, no. But, like I usually watch very like upbeat things, but I'm like you know what? Every now and then it's good to feel something else. And so yeah. this is definitely going to bring you to that place. And like, <sighs> okay, yeah. well, deep breath, was, deep like, yeah, something we we have to check it out. For sure. And yeah, if any of you out there are watching right now, order the books so that we can read it together. I'm going to start it tonight. Uh, that's going to be my my project tonight is to get this book read before next Tuesday. So, all right, we will be right back in one second. We have a short little clip for you. Just a quick reminder, make sure you subscribe, 
Leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you. Fluffy. Like... <laughs> <laughs> all right we are back and we are moving on to our movie picks those were our Yay. show picks and now lucy's gonna kick us off with scott pilgrim oh my goodness so this one we just watched it uh last night and the night before i can remember but again and romy watched it for the first time and those of you who follow me on instagram i don't know if you guys saw my post romy was already he trying to fight <laughs> <laughs> uh well this one oh i have not read the comic book but i would love to read it uh i remember when i watched it the first time when it came out august the release it was august 13 2010 which has been what 11 years now holy moly wow uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be about 11 years and director edgar wright um i love this director i love the way he does things um the same thing with uh uh what is it called Shaun of the dead uh no wait not that one uh, the end, the world's end, uh, the, or the world's end. I love okay. the way he tells the stories. And uh, Scott Pil I, I, the, this is one movie that I can watch over and over again, and I cannot get tired of it. I just what's, love what's it. the general premise here? Well, I've seen it, but Scott, he like, he, uh, okay, so Scott he has to fight, uh, um, he, he meets Ramona, and she has seven evil ex boyfriends, and he yeah. has to fight all of them to i guess be with her and uh so he keeps fighting and captain america's in here and he's the bad guy <laughs> superman or uh oh, yeah, superman. that's true superman uh captain marvel <laughs> superman captain marvel he was the first superman right like the uh well, he was uh, the well not the very first superman but the yeah. before he, he did henry the guy before henry Cavill, yeah, yeah yeah before henry he's also so, in dc he, uh, isn't he gonna be another he, remember he was that was he um that the adam for the uh shoot cw oh yes i, yeah. I yeah yeah he was i know he was on one of those yeah. yeah but yeah we have some superheroes in this mm -hmm. <laughs> captain marvel mm -hmm. captain america uh in the superman uh in here so yeah in in it, it's just such a fun movie to watch and, and like the soundtrack the soundtrack too like i remember like when i watched it when i watched it for the first time i even got the ringtone because <laughs> i just loved it so much and this one in the box office made a 41 48.1 million and now it's available on netflix if you guys want to watch it but uh jen did you read the comic books um i i read the first it was like a like graphic novel type uh okay. i did it was the art wasn't really something that I normally gravitate towards. So I was like, mm -hmm. it was interesting, but not enough for me to pick up the other, the other volumes. And then when they made this into a movie, I was like, okay, I'll watch it. And it, yeah, it was fun. Like they did like that different kind of like animation type style, mm -hmm. uh, for some of the fight like scenes. That. And it was, it was fun. And then, uh, who's the, the girlfriend, the girl who she's trying, he's trying to date. Uh, which one, uh, uh, Ramona or. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that Ramona. was just, it was just, and then to see like her reaction to everything, I don't know it was it was yeah, it was fun. I I liked it, and uh, I was able to read just a little bit of uh, on Google, like I googled it, and then you able to read just a PDF like of the first um, uh, volume, I believe. And I like it. There's almost the same thing, and yeah. just the little things that when he explains how he made knife knife knives. Wait, what's her name? Am I pronouncing it right? The Say, first girlfriend, the seventeen-year-old, <laughs> seventeen-year-old girlfriend, Nile, Niles, knives, knives, knives. Okay. knives. Uh, <laughs> like how you know when they're, uh, um, okay, spoilers. It came out freaking eleven years ago, so whatever. Uh, when she's about to tell Ramona how, uh, or the sister, how he, uh, she met Scott. You know, in the movie they don't show, but on the comic book they do show, like, and it, it explains how she met him and uh in the bus you know and she's explaining it like how but in the comic or, or the the graphic novel you can see how she's explaining those little details that they don't show in the movie um uh, it's pretty cool i, I really like this movie anthony's it's a fun. huge fan he saw that you picked this he's like oh no i want to watch it i'm like i think that's what we're going for here we're getting you guys watch poached it. back into movies yeah. that you may have missed the first time around yeah it, i mean like again the director he's really good so and he also did ant-man 
Oh, I like that movie. Very the cool. One, the first one. So it's like you see like the little things awake when they're talking, like it, it's the same. Uh, so yeah, I recommend this one, guys. And it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Very good. All right, moving on. We have what's up next? Oh, this is my pick. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm totally nerding out here. I don't know what made me think of True Lies. This is before before the Bernie Sanders meme. This is before any of that shit happened. I was like, I want to watch True Lies. And so uh, Anthony and I, it took us forever to track this down. It's now available on Amazon Prime though. Oh. Um, anyway, so I re went back and rewatched it because I feel like as we get older, if we go back and rewatch films that we saw back in the 90s, we see it from a totally different perspective. Like the whole, the whole story changed for me when I watched it. Uh, for those of you who have not seen True Lies, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger there. He... Uh, basically is leading a double life. He's an agent, a secret agent, but he's also, you know, playing the perfect dad Well, not necessarily perfect, but the dad role. And then Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, she's kind of that bored housewife. Like she's, her life has no excitement in it. So you see her start to kind of lead her own life and they end up kind of colliding together. Uh, again, the reason I picked this is because I just thought it would be something fun to watch, bring back some nostalgia. I love Bill Arnold. I think he did great. Or Tom Arnold. I'm sorry. Tom Arnold. He did awesome. And Bill Paxton. Ooh, playing a skeevy, skeevy, skeevy. Yeah. I mean, he was, his character again was hilarious. Uh, I and looked at that scene when that famous scene, like when she, they're in the, in the bedroom and she has to like dance for him. And is this that, one right? That's the Bernie Sanders meme. Oh, you know how he's in there with his oh, baby? Oh, like this? Yes, I didn't see that meme. Oh, it's Bernie Sanders with his little mittens at the inauguration, and then you see Jake Lee's ass. Yeah, so he's like watching her dance. It was hilarious. It's circul mm -hmm. circulating around uh, Facebook, but I'm like, ah, oh, that's my pick. And there's um, a, a, long, a young Eliza Dushku face from Buffy. Right, their daughter is in this, which, I mean, I, I kind of forgot, but it's pretty funny. That chick knows how to hold on to a jet like nobody's business. Dude, uh, I keep hearing that there might be... I, the occasional rumblings of like true lies number two because jamie lee curtis's character like her arc super cool and at the end when they're dancing the tango like i love that number one that that song whenever it plays i don't care if it's in a movie or like i just i'm like i like it's like an, an infamous tango song and i'm like i like it okay well I'm, I'm glad you brought up tango because if you remember the beginning of the movie he's dancing with oh what's her name what's her name what's her name uh she plays juno skinner uh mm. tia carrer carrer tia carrer oh yeah yeah the, e yeah. the evil yeah. one yeah so he's doing the tango with her at the beginning of the movie you know it's mm -hmm. all seductive and then at the end of this movie again you'll see the scene right here at the very end he's doing the tango again with his wife which kind of signifies that reignited passion and love in their marriage which i thought that was very strategic to use the same dance at the beginning of the movie and the end which again when i was 14 and i watched this i never thought about it but well, and then, I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis, I, I never saw her in that light. I guess, you know, we were all, you know, I was younger when I first saw this and didn't even again. But when she changes and, like, rips off the sleeves and, like, does the hair, I was that just like. Scene, that scene when she takes the, the water out of the vase and she's like. <laughs> was like I'm like, Jamie Lee Curtis, okay. No. Okay. Body. Does anybody know if she used a body double? She didn't, right? I don't know. I she mean, looked that? amazing, man. Mm -hmm. It'd be really hard because they used her face a lot. Like, how right. would you? <laughs> well, I thought maybe like maybe a butt double or something. But oh. if that was legit her, then <laughs> man. <laughs> man, yeah. Like Anthony and I were watching. I'm like, it's okay. You can you can stare too because holy hell, she looked amazing. <laughs> in the way she There's another movie like before this when she was a lot younger, uh, where it shows her movies. Is it? Ooh. Like, Halloween? I can't remember. The, huh? Not Halloween. No, 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 no. Before that, I think. Uh, oh my God, I can't remember the name. Like the movie. Uh, Come on, guys, in the chat. What movie does Jamie Lee Curtis show her boobies? This is important. Yeah, yeah I can't remember, but I, oh my goodness. Here, I'll. Click I can't just remember name. seeing. That. I'm like, oh my god, because I mean, I watch it now as a grown up, and I'm like, oh my god, I seen her boobies. She used to be She was in Freaky Friday with Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, no. <laughs> Go back and watch this though. There's something so comforting about like the 90s suits, you know, the gray suit with the single button and just watching all the old cars. I, I don't know. I get a kick out of older movies, not older, but like movies from the 90s. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Again, I think you can find it right now on Amazon. So rent it, spend four bucks. Uh, You're welcome. 
Yeah. Have to check it out. Oh wait, it's not free. We have to pay for it. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, at least I did because it wasn't coming out on Prime for the twenty fourth, mm -hmm. but it might be Prime now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the next one. I think it's oh Jen. <laughs> So I couldn't remember if I picked Galaxy Quest before and I'm, now I'm starting to think about it. I'm like, maybe I have, but I if not, so. then yay. Uh, but the reason why I chose it again or for the first time was <laughs> I love Galaxy Quest. I can rewatch this movie a billion times and still like be happy with it. Um, but Tim Allen came out within like the past week or two about saying that they did have a, a sequel planned and then it has it's being re rewritten so there's still a possibility mm -hmm. of galaxy quest 2 coming out so oh, wow. i am just fingers crossed hopefully within the next like five years um everyone else like when they talk about like uh, sigourney weaver like they always have good things to say about this like i just and then the comics there's at least two or three comic book series that came out the one you see here on the screen is from mm -hmm. the idw uh first first one um but yeah the premise is just like star trekky right uh that these actors who portray star trek type characters on galaxy quest uh at a convention which i thought was also nice like at a convention right like that's kind of cool uh uh tim allen gets pulled into space and gets it becomes like real life but then you see like each character handled in a different kind of way and like their growth and uh i guess one guy i guess never really understood because the what was it the the engineer mm -hmm. thought that they're just on like a really cool set. He had no idea. Like it was just, <laughs> it was just such a fun, just such a fun movie, and it holds up so well. Like, yeah, it makes me feel oh. good after watching this. That's something uh, I don't think I ever seen. I don't, really, I don't, really? I need. Uh, yeah, I want to. Do you guys oh, know? Is so it is it streaming anywhere? Oh, that's one thing I kind of forgot. Got to Let me check real quick. I mean, I have it on uh, DVD. I, I I sought it out. Oh, I got okay. five bucks. Okay. Half price books is like five bucks. Uh, yeah. But uh, I oh man. Oh, this is a really good one, and I'm such an Alan Rickman fan, Harry Potter fan. So, but maybe that's why they're kind of pushing back the because I mean maybe they have to replace Rickman. <laughs> yeah. Well, because he he was really involved in that sequel script, and uh, Tim Allen for the first time like talked about it because that's one thing is that we kept hearing about it but no one ever knew any details and it had heavily him dealing like uh, Alan Rickman's character was heavy heavily in that he's like so of course you have to rewrite it uh but they still want to include his character somehow because like he just did such a fantastic like Spock type, type character uh, incredible. and then also like, getting tired of saying his like one-liner being like I'm not saying it again like, <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> <saying> <laughs> it again. <laughs> no it's not going to happen yeah. uh, what, what was his line oh shit what was it by God, far, something ham by God, God, far, it's hammer. I will avenge thee, or so, 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 something along, along those lines. Like I haven't, like oh, I saw somebody it. Somebody will tell us. Somebody yeah. will tell us. God, oh, God, far, it's hammer. Like I will avenge thee. It's, it's something along the lines of like you will be avenged. But like he's like I'm not saying it again. Uh, but then he gets at the end. He does say it like one more time. Um, <laughs> and even like the 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 people who were really in the convention, convention goers who were really into it end up helping out at the end and like looking up like the schematics and like it was just. Yeah, if you want to just smile and have a fun, and you like Star Trek or even like something remotely like 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 that, like it's just it's really fun. Okay, okay, I need to check it out then. Yeah, I need to add it to the list. It looks like it's it's three bucks on Amazon, YouTube. Right? And Amazon. Too. And that's all I'm really seeing is three bucks on YouTube. But I, I promise it's worth it. It's worth it. Okay. But if they do redo it, how they're gonna do it with Alan Rickman? If he well, so they they, could, they would probably just either because he said that there were some scenes that were deleted from the uh -huh. original. Um, uh -huh. But then just you can always bring him up and just like maybe he. So I don't want to ruin it, but the way they leave it, like he could easily go out in a good way off screen and then just bring it back up, and there'd be like a monument to him or mm. something like like dedicated to him and. Or have a character that was like heavily impacted uh, by that character. I mean, there's a couple of different ways, but like, it, I just it would be really sad if they just never yeah. came back. Well, with this. well, hopefully they do. I like, I don't know. Yeah, well, hopefully they'll. they'll you have to let me know. And I'm curious if you like it or not. <laughs> He's gonna <laughs> love it. Watch it. I have to watch it. I'll watch solid it. Pick. All right, uh, let's move on to the next one. Oh, what do we have next? Oh, we're doing comic book next. Sorry, should have mentioned that. And first up, we have Missy's oh. pick. 
Holy shit, Snits. I don't know what to say about this one. I read it. It's a different the way it is. It's, it, I'm Scott Snyder and Jeff Lemire. Um, this one came out. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, how long ago? Sorry, I was not prepared. It has to be uh, like five 2016, years. I think, 2017. <laughs> and um, I remember I, I only picked up issue one. And I only have only I issue one. And I I remember what, the first time I read it, I was just like, again, completely different than, than a regular comic book. Because some of the pages is like a full-on uh, page of just, uh, you know, uh, how do you say it? It's writing? Like you, you know, dialogue? Sorry. Yeah, dialogue. Dialogue. Okay. And, and, you know, like just few little uh, um, drawings, not that much. But then later on, like, it does add a little bit to um, like a comic book. You know, you see in the little side picture right here. Um, it's completely different uh, than what I have read. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if, if it, I was confused kind of, you know, cause it's like, well, let me tell you guys, tell you guys what it's about. Um, it's like, what if they found a, a cure to death? And it's set in the future, so where genetics cure, there's a genetic cure for death that has been found. And years after discovery, one man starts to question everything. It's leading, in, leading him on mind-bending and journey that will bring him face-to-face -face with his past and his own mortality. So what I read, it's like when him, like when he's little with his parents, and uh, the dad, it's kind of like tired of life kind of thing they're like with the their their day-to-day -day life and they oh. just decide to take a trip and while they're taking a trip it, you can tell it's like they're they you can tell like they, they feel you can feel they're they're bumped out like about something you know the dad in in the mom and uh so while they're driving they see a, a green balloon and they they it says like if you if you catch this, like you win a giveaway or a prize or something like that. So they're getting so excited for it and they haven't had that excitement in a long time. So they grab it and they, there's a phone number that you can call and they call. And while the dad is calling, like, they're like, what? Like he starts arguing with the person on the phone. And while he's arguing, the mom's over here collapsed. She collapses. And as he's telling the story, like he doesn't understand what's happening. It's like, my mom just fell and I don't know what's going on. And then later on, it kind of goes back to the future when he has been uh, like he had died kind of he's immortal already and he's has had many years but he still kind of looks the same and this it, is it, all in book one yeah this is all in it's a, it's a long long it is pretty like and it's not your standard like your regular comic books uh sizes it, it's one of those like the the dc black label size it's pretty oh, okay big. yeah and it's thick too it's not you know uh uh I, I, that's why it's only three because they're like they're pretty long, oh. and uh, it, it it's confused. I, I'm like a little confused. I was like kind of like what the hell is happening here? <laughs> so I don't know if I like it. Uh, like I could see like ooh, uh, not everybody. I, and I heard not a lot of people liked it because yeah, their reviews are kind of mixed. I'm reading. Yeah, and it's not like your regular comic book. Uh, it, it could be more like a as a graphic novel. Because the way it, it it is, um, but the, I mean, it's kind of I don't know. It, it's a little confusing. The watercolor is beautiful. The art and inside, yeah. It Jeff, like I mean, I think he's a good artist. <laughs> you know, like I liked it. And again, a lot of people didn't like the art in the inside. I remember, like even when it came out, people saying they didn't like the art in the inside because it like it's not your normal. I guess you know. Um, but it's it i'm gonna keep going we'll see how how it ends and i'll let you guys know if it sucked <laughs> oh, it yeah sad. keep going i want I'm, I'm curious i mean the concept yeah. it's, it's an intriguing yeah. concept finding a cure for death like yeah. how that would change the psyche yeah and they're like in, like he's immortal but then at the same time like it seems like where i'm at like if i don't know if he has his family around or not like um it, it, it's kind of and then him after the, that many years collecting the items from like because where where he's telling the story, I think it's like, uh, not, like the eighties, nineties, eighties, and then it just like, it, it just kind of weird. Well, we'll see. I'll let you guys know. To we'll be continued. Yeah. <laughs> kind of reminds me a little bit. Like, uh, oh shoot, was it in in time? 
Mm -hmm. uh, just Justin Timberlake, where like you you're basically immortal. Hmm. And like they have, so basically they discovered how to stop your aging. I think 27 is the age that you stop aging at. Mm -hmm. And then like good age. money yeah. becomes your time, right? Because it's like, yeah. well, the, the world will get over overpopulated. So instead they, of like, working for money, you work for time. Anyone? Yeah, and they have a third thing right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That's interesting. Yeah, that's good it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Time becomes mm -hmm. currency. That's, that's, yeah, I haven't seen that in forever. Yeah. Well, you're you're talking about, I don't think you're I, like, hmm. I don't think I ever watched it. So that's another one. It's, I could, it's, it was I thought it was good because it was just an interesting premise and like it's kind of true how today like I you know I have to go I go to my work every single day and I have to because I have to pay my bills. It's like but you think about like, if you were immortal, you don't have to really pay your bills anymore. It's not really about that. It's about well, how long can I be? And then if you run out of time because you're hmm. poor, then you just kind of. You checked out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, very good. We'll have to check that one out. I'm curious to see how it ends. Um, moving oh, on to, I believe, Jen's pick, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Go ahead. What is this? <laughs> uh, so it's Warcorns. Uh, it's Warrior Unicorns. And uh, it's uh, Source Point Press. Like, this mm -hmm. is actually the first issue came out last year. Um, there's a comic, I go to a lot of different comic stores and then the one that I got this from, um, Alley Cat, she, I was picking up, uh, oh man, the, oh man, there's like a homeless guy, uh, I was thinking about another one that was not similar, but like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not saying this well, um, uh, but it was recommended to me. I was like, what, what? And she's like, I think you're, if you like that one, you're, you're like this one. I'm like, okay. And then I went home and I read it. I'm like, okay, is there another one? She's like, nope, that was, that was it. I'm like, but it leaves it at like a cliffhanger. And she's like, nope, it was, it was a, a one issue thing. And then I'm like, <sighs> cause it was, so Garrett Gunn writes it. Um, it, it just, it's really fun. The colors are really like creative and I like the story and you want to just continue it. But I mean, I guess it's not really, continuable unless they like figure a way to like rewrite some stuff but but i got super excited about this again because the one you see so the okay the smaller version with the rainbow mm -hmm. uh and all the characters on it that is the first one-off series but the one oh. where you, the work work horns the top where it's just his face that comes out tomorrow january 27th and that is a prequel. And basically it's gonna be a four issue series <laughs> with like the setup. It's like them going through boot camp, like becoming like the war horns. And I am super mega excited. Like <laughs> not your typical story at all. Um, but it's just a lot of fun. I just like it is just different and I I like it. <laughs> oh, well, let me tell you that Garrett Gunn just started following us on Instagram. Nice. <gasps> Yeah, yeah. I, he just started following, and we started following him. And oh. uh, I, I did see one of the 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 covers for it for that, and it, it's pretty it's pretty funny. It, I think it was a, a fun art that that he posted. It was funny. It nice. was funny. Yeah, like it it, oh. it made me after reading uh, the first one. I put so I always like make a list, and then sometimes I forget about it. And I'm like, when I re I put an order in for this. I was like, man, because he wrote uh, Franklin and Ghost and Go West. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yep. I, because I read this, I really want to go and now try to find those uh, in like back issue bins or, you know, ask my comic book store to, to order it. But like, mm. he's an really interesting guy. Like when you, like I looked him up a little bit and he's like, he's a a, a vet. Um, but just like, it's different, man. Like, because, you know, we read superheroes, we read like, in, like but this is like true like freaking indie. I, I want to I want to read it now. <laughs> it well, looks pretty interesting. <laughs> I want it to be a cartoon series. Oh, is what I really want it to be. Oh. Like I want to pick it up. Like, seed. Ooh, like for Adult Swim, like something like for adults. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Like I don't. Lord, did you get a chance to look at any of it? I did actually. I did a I did a lot of research on Garrett. I actually followed him on Instagram the other day too, um, just to make because I was thinking I'm like we gotta get him nailed down for an interview. So Garrett, if you yeah. are watching contact us we'd love to have you on when he started the oh. kickstarter for this he actually gave people little 
unicorn army patches, which I thought was so cool. I'm like, cool. I wonder if you can find one somewhere. I'm going to tell but... him right now. I, I, I will send this to him. Uh, <laughs> you have to send a clip. Right. Yeah, so he can yeah. see that we're, we're shouting him out. Um, I think the interior art was really well done. I was looking at that too. It's so much fun. This book just seems fun. Uh, so Kevin did a great job as well. So maybe we could have them both on. And then inks were done by Jeremy Clark. There you go. Hey. Let's definitely have him on too. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I'm like, what are people saying? Oh my God. What, who's saying what in the chat? I'm not even looking at the chat. Damn it. Who's looking at the chat? What, what's happening in the chat? Uh, oh, it went away. Oh no, no, no. Our YouTube had a, it crashed. Uh, uh, oh, so right yeah. now we're only on, on Facebook, I believe. Uh, but don't worry. It's recording. Yeah. We'll okay. post it on YouTube. It'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. So this is a good one. Um, can we still find this in stores? You think? Uh, so, um, the ones in my area didn't have the first issue, but I almost wonder, I haven't gone to source points press, uh, website yet, but the mm -hmm. war corns, the prequel comes out tomorrow. And I, I definitely feel like if, if your comic book store, especially does like indie stuff or sources, like if they carry source point press, they probably will have a few of this on the shelf. If not, you can go to your comic book store and be like, Hey, source point press war corns. And they're like, what? And you're like, warrior unicorns and they'll be like what and you're like yeah oh hey oh. <laughs> hey brian <laughs> hi brian <laughs> oh, so funny that's one of our producers say hi <laughs> there we go hi brian <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> that was hilarious <gasps> <laughs> it's okay now i just feel bad because he made all of us look hair shamed us his hair looks so much better than all of ours Damn, Brian. Brian. It's lucky smooth. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Jen's pick. So if you have a chance, check out Warcorns and Garrett. If you are watching, contact us. We would like to have you on the show. All right. So the one that I picked this week is a little bit different. Um, normally I go for indie books, but I decided to go um, for something a little bit more well-known. Okay. So Anthony was telling me, he's like, this just came out this last week and he had read it and he's like, Lord, give it a, give it a try. So uh, the writer is Larry Hama, which is he's pretty well known for his G.I. Joe run during the 80s. And he had another little miniseries, I believe, during the 90s. Really good writer. Um, the story itself, I thought, was very solid. So I, if you're not familiar with Danny Rand and the whole story behind this, it's probably not the best book to introduce you. Mm. But a great book to start a miniseries. Uh, very interesting. They bring back... Jen, have you read this? Uh, no, it, it just came out. Uh, I meant to grab one, but I, I I didn't. I'm actually, I really do like uh, Iron Fist a lot. I Did think you I read Immortal? It. Did you do yeah. the Immortal Iron Fist? Okay, so you know, is it Pi? Is that how you pronounce it? P-E-I? That's how I read it. That's the thing is that like, it's never, <sighs> that's the hard thing about when it's not introduced, like even with Star Wars, right? If you it's don't hear guess. the name in a movie or TV show, you're like, how do I say this? It's this until I hear different. It's Pi. That's how I was calling her in my head. I'm like, her, her okay. name is Pi. Um, but anyway, at the beginning of this book, Pi is being babysat by Luke Cage, which I thought was hilarious. And they kind of they kind of aged her down a little bit, which threw me off. Um, okay. Like she seems like she's like maybe four or five. She looks is small to me. The same is it the same you six one six universe or a different universe? I think it's the same, but I've only read the first the first book. So I'm not, I'm not all the way filled in yet, but um, again, if you haven't read this one, it's a good concept. He starts at the beginning. Uh, you can see this first page right here. They're being invaded by these like zombie creatures that are coming out of uh, the different realms. And he has to go and fight and defend the dragons that are in each of the heavens. And he's trying to defend their hearts and stuff. But anyway, uh, I, I read this one first and I was like, okay, now I'm kind of into this. And so then Anthony's like, Laura, go to Netflix and watch the Iron Fist show. Okay, Jen, hold on, hold on, hold on. You and I are gonna disagree here. Oh, we both, we both agree. <laughs> Ooh, she, she's yeah, a boxer. Really? So, <laughs> so everybody, God. every single thing that I read was like, oh my God, this this show is shit. You know, you can't have a white boy do martial arts. Yeah, he's terrible, blah, blah, blah. I really liked it. I thought it was great. I've watched the first three episodes so far and I think that it's it gives a really good insight to where his character comes from. I don't mind him. I mean, yeah, he's a, you know, he's a curly haired white boy doing martial arts, but I mean, but if he could execute a little bit better, like, and I, I don't know, like, like you can't compare warrior to like iron fist. Right. Cause the thing is, is like, and I, I'll, I'll give him this. 
he didn't have a ton of time to, and he doesn't have it as a background. And it's like, okay, well, if you know you have to film quickly, you got to cast for someone that can do, like, especially, I don't know, do you, okay, so after you watch Iron Fist, watch The Defenders, it gets slightly better, but he still does this thing where he, like, you can tell he's, like, got weird timing with some of his stuff, and you're like, oh, I don't like it. Why? That, that's the reason. I don't like it. I'm that's like, the reason I didn't keep watching it. I watch only one, like the beginning, the, the, the opening. Yeah, but you're story. like a kung fu expert. So like for <laughs> you, you're like, that's not the right move. That pose is wrong. But like, if you know what I mean? Like I, I went in like, okay, let's just see if this character can hold his own. And I thought he did all right. Yeah. And you know what? I, I think that's that's a curse <laughs> of like now what? Then no, like watching like good fighting scenes. And I mean, Jen, she is an actual fighter. <laughs> I know, <laughs> like, right? you know, like you could see like in those moves and it's just kind of like at least a higher, better stuff person. Or or give something. him more time, right? Like if you're already seeing that he's struggling with the choreography, okay, then give him more time to like feel comfortable or like, as, I, I don't know. I'm sure they, they, they probably tried to, right? They're trying to like, they probably boot camps him like they do other superheroes. Yeah. But, like it just, his acting is fine. Like when they first casted him and people were like, Meh, I was like, no. I can see him as as, as Danny Rand. That, that that's fine. But yeah. then, and when I first saw him, like like some of the things, but that's writing to some of his like lines where I was like, okay, stop seeing your Iron Fist. Like that's not, it's fine. <laughs> I just felt like because I love the character. I can I have like a hoodie that has Danny Rand. I I, I, I do you really? Like, I want one now. Yeah, so, like Ooh, I just winning matching ones. Ooh, ooh. And I liked. Uh, is it Col Colin Colin Colleen Wit Wit? Uh, the girl in it. The girl. The girl fight. Have you got her yet or no? Uh, the the one that owns the studio. Yes. Yes. yes I yes. love her character, and I like Missy Knight. I want them she's to have their own badass. She's a badass man. Like she like. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. She's, she's really cool. their own show, right? Like great. And then he, I just want him like if he had more time, but he didn't. And like I got through when I first watched it, I made myself watch half the season, and then I was like, you didn't finish the first season. I I went back and I did finish it, but like. Only after I watched uh, Defenders, and even then I was like, "Man, this could have really been something." And like, again, he's a great actor. I like him. I just felt like he needed more time, and I was just like, "Man, Finn and I Jones." Like hope. Hmm? Was, it's his name's Finn Jones, and the the chick we're talking about, Jessica Yuli Henwick. She was in Spirit oh. Warriors. Lucy, do you know that one from 2010? Mm -hmm. It's a children's show. Hmm. Um. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I thought Jessica Strope, is that how you would say it? Mm, I don't know if I'm saying that. Now. She did really well. I I'm liking it so far. If you haven't seen the first episode, I'm kind of spoiling it a little bit. That that homeless guy that he has, who, what's his name? Um, Al, maybe? I thought like, that was such a beautiful concept, how he sat down. He was like, you know, we were, we were doing all right. Humans were okay as hunters and gatherers. And then we you know, started building cities and then food and money got introduced to it. And he, cause he had just handed him a sandwich. He's like, there's so much food to be found if you know where. And I, I don't know. I thought that had a really cool. I mean, Iron Fist still has like, I still have a lot of hope for this. Um, I know that we are, oh, shoot. There's so much like could happen in the MCU from what, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard the rumblings, but like uh, Charlie Cox from Daredevil, mm -hmm. apparently Kevin Mahi really liked him. And now there's like that he filmed some Spider-Man uh, scenes Mm -hmm. And then I think he likes uh, Ritter from Jessica Jones. Now here's the thing: Do you watch? Do you watch Jessica Jones? No, I haven't. I watched some episodes, but I didn't finish them. <laughs> it's so good. Jessica Jones, <laughs> Purple Man, Lucy, freaking watch it. It's great. Purple Man's awesome. Like, he, like I had a hard time at first with the villain because uh, he was a Doctor Who, so I was like, this is weird. But then he's such a good job being a bad guy that I'm like, oh, I hate him now. Like, <laughs> it's. And Kristen Ritter, like, don't ever watch an interview because her n normal voice is very like pitchy. But her mm -hmm. her her um, character voice is spot freaking on. Like, she's such a great character of Jessica. Jo oh man, you guys, Jessica I Jones. Know, I like I liked her as Jessica Jones. I watched that the B twenty three apartment or something like that. Like that's how oh. I. <laughs> it's so funny, <laughs> but. Uh, I like her. Yeah, I think she did good at, at, as Jessica Jones. I I, uh, I just didn't finish it, and it's been a while. I don't. Well, know the cool thing about the two uh, when you're watching even um, Iron Fist, uh, mm -hmm. they filmed in New York. So the one time I, I got yeah. to go 
to New York, uh, I sought out like the Jessica Jones bar and then they film a lot like around. So you can like easily pull up those places and just go and visit and be like, Mm-hmm. Just nerd out, take little selfies. And yeah, despite yeah. it's saying, despite the critical reception, third parties said that this got a huge, a very strong viewership. So even though they canceled mm-hmm. it, it's like you were saying, there still were people and maybe there will be something well, to happen with this. And they would mention the MCU, like the incident, right? In New York. And they would mention these little things going on, but never, ever did we see them get mentioned in any other, because mm-hmm. long story short, there was some dissension between movies and tv but tv would mention the movies man i just it, it'll yeah. be yeah daredevil was great too. you watch daredevil yeah. oh yeah daredevil. Guess, yeah that one that is so good yeah so good but even uh sam he watched i watched here and there but not much of the punisher and it was good too um i didn't really pay much attention but but daredevil yes i love daredevil and and I, think that was like the, I think that was like the best out of all those uh, from Netflix. Yeah. And then okay. Iron Fist, like, I still feel like it's going to come back. We are getting Shang-Chi this year. Fingers crossed. Uh, I think they're done filming. Yeah. Uh, and I, it'd be cool to see these two characters, like, meet up. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm kind of sold on this. I'm going to start doing some more. I'm going to finish. I'm finishing the Netflix seasons. I'm going to see where that story goes. I, I, mm-hmm. I like it. I might be one of the few people out there that was like, okay, yeah, I think this is a a good way to learn a lot about a character really fast. If you haven't read all the previous comic books True. and then having watched that and then going back and reading a dragon's heart, it's like, okay, you can kind of understand it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. If you haven't had any introductory to mm-hmm. Danny Rand as a character, and then but eventually watch defenders. Cause then they're all in it. Mm-hmm. Dude, man, I, that's all I'm going to be doing, doing now. I'm like, forget my kids. I'm just going to sit there and <laughs> be shows all day long until I am caught up. But yeah, I like it. So those of you that are watching, let me know in the chat if there's any other fans out there of the Iron Fist. Uh, that book, like I said, is a really good one. It came out this last week. So you should still be able to find it at your local LCS or I don't know if Bird City has it. We'll have to, I'll have to ask Anthony. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, be sure to check it out. Um, okay. I think that was it for us tonight. Girls, you guys have anything to add? No, just make sure you guys follow us all over. Well, Lucy, what's next week? <gasps> Yay! What's next episode? It's going to be Valentine's episode. Yes. So if you guys don't know what to buy for you, honey, make sure you guys have your uh, better half watch the next episode so I can help, you know, give them ideas of what to get them what to get us, you know, just, just saying. <laughs> Very similar yeah. to our Christmas episode. So we'll be doing the 14 gifts and we're doing it next week. So you'll have plenty of time to get your orders in. Cause you know, shipping's shitty nowadays it takes forever. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll be back next Tuesday at 9 PM Eastern standard time. If you haven't already like, and follow the page and thank you guys so much for tuning in. Good night.